In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. For three years there was no war between Aram and Israel. Then during the third year, King Jehoshaphat of Judah went to visit King Ahab of Israel. During the visit, the king of Israel said to his officials, Do you realize that the town of Ramoth-Gilead belongs to us? And yet we have done nothing to recapture it from the king of Aram. Then he turned to Jehoshaphat and asked, Will you join me in battle to recover Ramoth-Gilead? Jehoshaphat replied to the king of Israel, Why, yes, of course, you and I are as one. My troops are your troops, and my horses are your horses. Then Jehoshaphat added, But first let's find out what the Lord says. So the king of Israel summoned the prophets, about four hundred of them, and asked them, Should I go to war against Ramoth-Gilead, or should I hold back? They all replied, Yes, go right ahead. The Lord will give the king victory. But Jehoshaphat asked, Is there not also a prophet of the Lord here? We should ask him the same question. The king of Israel replied to Jehoshaphat, There is one more man who could consult the Lord for us, but I hate him. He never prophesies anything but trouble for me. His name is Micaiah, son of Imlah. Jehoshaphat replied, That's not the way a king should talk. Let's hear what he has to say. So the king of Israel called one of his officials and said, Quick, bring Micaiah, son of Imlah. King Ahab of Israel and King Jehoshaphat of Judah, dressed in their royal robes, were sitting on thrones at the threshing floor near the gate of Samaria. All of Ahab's prophets were prophesying there in front of them. One of them, Zedekiah son of Kenana, made some iron horns and proclaimed, This is what the Lord says, With these horns you will gore the Aramaeans to death. All the other prophets agreed, Yes, they said. Go up to Ramoth-Gilead and be victorious, for the Lord will give the king victory. Meanwhile, the messenger who went to get Micaiah said to him, Look, all the prophets are promising victory for the king. Be sure that you agree with them and promise success. But Micaiah replied, As surely as the Lord lives, I will say only what the Lord tells me to say. When Micaiah arrived before the king, Ahab asked him, Micaiah? Should we go to war against Ramoth-Gilead, or should we hold back? Micaiah replied sarcastically, Yes, go up and be victorious, for the Lord will give the king victory. But the king replied sharply, How many times must I demand that you speak only the truth to me when you speak for the Lord? Then Micaiah told him, In a vision I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains, like sheep without a shepherd. And the Lord said, Their master has been killed. Send them home in peace. Didn't I tell you? The king of Israel exclaimed to Jehoshaphat. He never prophesies anything but trouble for me. Then Micaiah continued. Listen to what the Lord says. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, with all the armies of heaven around him, on his right and on his left. And the Lord said, Who can entice Ahab to go into battle against Remoth Gilead so he can be killed? There were many suggestions, and finally a spirit approached the Lord and said, I can do it. How will you do this? the Lord asked, and the spirit replied, I will go out and inspire all of Ahab's prophets to speak lies. You will succeed, said the Lord, go ahead and do it. So you see, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouths of all your prophets, for the Lord has pronounced your doom. Then Zedekiah, son of Kenana, walked up to Micaiah and slapped him across the face. Since when did the Spirit of the Lord leave me to speak to you? he demanded. And Micaiah replied, You will find out soon enough, when you are trying to hide in some secret room. Arrest him, the king of Israel ordered. Take him back to Ammon, the governor of the city, and to my son Joash. Give them this order from the king. Put this man in prison, and feed him nothing but bread and water until I return safely from the battle. But Micaiah replied, If you return safely, it will mean that the Lord has not spoken through me. Then he added to those standing around, Everyone, 
Mark my words. So King Ahab of Israel and King Jehoshaphat of Judah led their armies against Ramoth Gilead. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, As we go into battle, I will disguise myself so no one will recognize me, but you wear your royal robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself, and they went into battle. Meanwhile, the king of Aram had issued these orders to his thirty-two chariot commanders. Attack only the king of Israel. Don't bother with anyone else. So when the Aramean chariot commanders saw Jehoshaphat in his royal robes, they went after him. There is the king of Israel, they shouted. But when Jehoshaphat called out, the chariot commanders realized he was not the king of Israel, and they stopped chasing him. An Aramean soldier, however, randomly shot an arrow at the Israelite troops, and hit the king of Israel between the joints of his armor. Turn the horses and get me out of here, Ahab groaned to the driver of his chariot. I'm badly wounded. The battle raged all that day, and the king remained propped up in his chariot facing the Arameans. The blood from his wound ran down to the floor of his chariot, and as evening arrived he died. Just as the sun was setting, the cry ran through his troops. We're done. Run for your lives. So the king died, and his body was taken to Samaria and buried there. Then his chariot was washed beside the pool of Samaria, and dogs came and licked his blood at the place where the prostitutes bathed, just as the Lord had promised. The rest of the events in Ahab's reign, and everything he did, including the story of the ivory palace and the towns he built, are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. So Ahab died, and his son Ahaziah became the next king. Jehoshaphat son of Asa began to rule over Judah in the fourth year of King Ahab's reign in Israel. Jehoshaphat was thirty-five years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem twenty-five years. His mother was Azubah, the daughter of Shili. Jehoshaphat was a good king, following the example of his father Asa. He did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight. During his reign, however, he failed to remove all the pagan shrines, and the people still offered sacrifices and burned incense there. Jehoshaphat also made peace with the king of Israel. The rest of the events in Jehoshaphat's reign, the extent of his power, and the wars he waged are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. He banished from the land the rest of the male and female shrine prostitutes, who still continued their practices from the days of his father Asa. There was no king in Edom at that time, only a deputy. Jehoshaphat also built a fleet of trading ships to sail to Ophir for gold, but the ships never set sail, for they met with disaster in their home port of Vezion Geber. At one time Ahaziah son of Ahab had proposed to Jehoshaphat, let my men sail with your men in the ships. But Jehoshaphat refused the request. When Jehoshaphat died, he was buried with his ancestors in the city of David. Then his son Jehoram became the next king. Ahaziah son of Ahab began to rule over Israel in the seventeenth year of King Jehoshaphat's reign in Judah. He reigned in Samaria two years, but he did what was evil in the Lord's sight, following the example of his father and mother and the example of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, who had led Israel to sin. He served Baal and worshipped him, provoking the anger of the Lord, the God of Israel, just as his father had done. God presides over heaven's court. He pronounces judgment on the heavenly beings. How long will you hand down unjust decisions by favouring the wicked? Give justice to the poor and the orphan. Uphold the rights of the oppressed and the destitute. Rescue the poor and helpless. Deliver them from the grasp of evil people. But these oppressors know nothing. They are so ignorant. They wander about in darkness while the whole world is shaken to the core. I say, you are gods. You are all children of the Most High. But you will die like mere mortals and fall like every other ruler. Rise up, O God, and judge the earth for all the nations belong to you. O God, do not be silent, do not be deaf. Do not be quiet, O God. Don't you hear the uproar of your enemies? Don't you see that your arrogant enemies are rising up? They devise crafty schemes against your people. They conspire against your precious ones. 
Come, they say, let us wipe out Israel as a nation. We will destroy the very memory of its existence. Yes, this was their unanimous decision. They signed a treaty as allies against you. These Edomites and Ishmaelites, Moabites and Hagrites, Gebelites, Ammonites and Amalekites, and people from Philistia and Tyre. Assyria has joined them too, and is allied with the descendants of Lot. Do to them as you did to the Midianites, and as you did to Sisera and Jabin at the Kishon River. They were destroyed at Endor, and their decaying corpses fertilized the soil. Let their mighty nobles die as Oreb and Zeb did. Let all their princes die like Zeba and Zalmunna. For they said, Let us seize for our own use these pasture lands of God. O oh my God, scatter them like tumbleweed, like chaff before the wind. As a fire burns a forest, and as a flame sets mountains ablaze, chase them with your fierce storm. Terrify them with your tempest. Utterly disgrace them, until they submit to your name, O Lord. Let them be ashamed and terrified forever. Let them die in disgrace. Then they will learn that you alone are called the Lord, that you alone are the Most High, supreme over all the earth.